folks, Steve Bird here, welcome back. Um, I was just getting ready to go out and do some spring farm chores and an idea popped in my head for a video. So I know a lot of you folks uh, kind of started just like me where you didn't grow up on a farm, you didn't inherit a farm and all the equipment that goes along with it. Uh, looks like we're being joined by Roscoe. Hey buddy. You didn't, you didn't inherit a farm, you didn't inherit a bunch of equipment. You may have a good job in town, so you bought yourself a piece of property and you're uh, trying to get going on with a farm or homestead or something like that. And my favorite quote from my neighbor, the commercial chicken farm, uh, is, I could afford a farm if I didn't have a farm. You know, and that, that sums it up pretty well, I believe. Um, there's all the expenses that uh, come along with that, especially if, if you have to buy all your equipment from scratch, can be quite staggering. So, some of the things I've done along the way is kind of be creative. Uh, for example, this contraption behind me, that's a homemade high capacity sprayer. Now don't worry, before anybody starts uh, jumping my case, I only spray uh, rainbow pixels and fairy dust, nothing else, nothing to protest or, or get upset about. Um, but basically, I started out with a 60 gallon tractor supply slash Chinese um, three point mounted hitch sprayer. And although that worked well for a little while, uh, the 60 gallons just didn't cut it. I, I average spraying 40 acres of pasture uh, and it seemed like I spent more time filling the tank with water than I did actually spraying. Uh, not to mention the transit time from each pasture to the water source and all that stuff adds up to be an unproductive day. And then one day, the as it rapidly fell apart because of the low quality components it was, I, I decided something had to change. And I was looking around and it, it just kind of hit me. A lot of us already have a lot of those liquid containers laying around. A lot of us already happen to have utility trailers. You kind of got to have a utility trailer, don't you? I actually, ironically made that trailer homemade back in the mid 90s, back when metal was cheap. I think I got $250 total into that thing to a metal shop with my plans, asked them to cut it all for me. All I had to do was some finished grinding and welding, and there we go. But uh, anyway, that's a sidetrack. I took a 275 gallon liquid container. This one used to actually be whiskey mash from a, or moonshine mash, from a Smoky Mountain Distillery in uh, here in uh, Tennessee. A friend of mine's son worked there, and he could get them, basically just take them off their hands for next to nothing, so I got a bunch of those. So I put one of those to work. Now, in the trailer format, one of the things that's nice about that, you may wonder why I've got this kind of redneck set up with just uh, some tie downs holding it down. That's because when I'm done spraying, I can pull my sprayer boom off the back, reach in there with my pallet fork, and pick that thing up, and I'm back to utility trailer. So it's uh, during the summer, it's a sprayer, in the winter, it's a utility trailer. Um, so anyway, the beauty of it being on a tractor uh, with a three-point hitch using a, a trailer mover is I can also control the spray, the height of the boom off the ground with the three-point hitch. If I just raise it, if I raise the tongue, it lowers the spray boom, makes it closer to the ground. If I lower it, lower the tongue, it raises the spray boom further off the ground. So I can I can adjust as I go, whether that's for changing terrain or wind conditions or, or whatever you need. Uh, so let's, uh, let's take a closer look here and I'll show you each individual component I use and how I put this together. They heard me talking and came running. This is Roscoe and Jaeger, or Farm Security. Okay, anyway, the spray boom on the back here was actually the boom off my little 60 gallon tractor supply sprayer. I just repurposed that, made a couple cheap little little brackets, and I even used wing nuts to hold those in place for easy removal. So all I have to do to take this boom off, to use this as a trailer again, is just take those two wing nuts off, pull that off, and disconnect that hose. It doesn't take but a minute. You may wonder why this long hose is coming out of the back with a pressure gauge in it. This hose was actually the sprayer wand hose that comes off of the manifold and the uh, cheap plastic wand broke. I just stuck that in there to plug the hole and uh, haven't got around to replacing it yet. 
And as like I said, I just use tie downs to hold it to the trailer so that it's easily easy to remove. Okay, for the pump, this is a actually a made in the USA pump. I bought at Rural King, my Remco. Um, I left it out one winter and it corroded on the inside and it wouldn't work. But I just pulled it apart. Uh, cleaned some rust off, worked it by hand a little, put it back together, and it's been running fine ever since. So I just won't leave it out anymore. And I bought this pump, and this was the original manifold with the, the selector to go to the wand or the sprayers, main sprayer, uh, that came on that little 60-gallon pump. These are available. You can buy these separately. You don't have to be parting out a pump to get this stuff. It's all it's already readily available. I did, however, add this large gauge, and I did that so that while sitting on the tractor seat, I can easily just look back and be able to read the needle and see what my spray pressure is, because if your pressure is starting to get low, you may have a clog or a leak or something that you need to investigate. And then I just drilled a hole in the top of the tank, and uh, I uh, put a little weight on the end of my pickup tube so it would drop drop uh, adequately down in there and not float on the top and occasionally suck air because with that length of a hose in this large of a tank it tended to want to float without a weight so that's just something to keep in mind and of course I vent when I spray I just I loosen this cap to where I can wiggle it so that I know it'll vent um, and because if you if you don't open that somehow as all this water pumps out the and there's no air rushing in to replace it the tank will start to I'm gonna suck in and implode on itself. So when I start to spray, I loosen that so that air uh, can can freely get in, but it, it doesn't splash and contaminants don't get to get out or get in. If if you just have it just open, uh, it, it would splash all over the place. So just a, a turn or two to where it's it's on there, so where you don't have splashing, but you you can get plenty of air venting um, is is all you need. And then for travel, I'll just tighten it on down. You may wonder why there's a toothbrush sitting up here. That's because uh, every now and then the pickup tube does get clogged, especially if you're spraying with uh, a, a spray with a surfactant in it and it may have been sitting for a while and that surfactant tends to start to clog up to uh, any of the, the contaminants that begin to accumulate as it sits. So this is to scrub the screen off on the pickup tube should it start getting clogged. Again, that's something you can tell by just being able to see your pressure gauge. As far as the turning it on and off goes, these wires, I've actually got two of them together so that it would reach all the way up there. Uh, these are your standard just uh, switches that you would buy in the sprayer section at Rural King or Tractor Supply. And they're just running up to the battery on the tractor. I've also used a pickup truck and a Suzuki Samurai with this sprayer in the past. And uh, that length of wire worked perfectly to reach up to the uh, cab of the truck or the Samurai uh, and be able to switch it on and off up there. Now, the thing to consider with that is then you don't have the ability to raise and lower your hitch, which adjusts the height of your spray. And I would pull it with something fairly substantial. I wouldn't try to use an ATV or such because if you do the math on what 275 gallons of water weighs, you've got about 2,200 pounds just in fluid. And that, uh, you can tell the tire squishing out there, that's quite a bit of weight. Um, this is a, I've got a 2,500 pound springs on this thing and, and they do the job adequately. I wouldn't want any less than that. So Jaeger here, he's a, uh, fetch fanatic and he can't figure out why I haven't been picking up the rock he's been putting in front of me and throwing it. So he's he's not gonna leave me alone so let's get that out of the way. Okay and this bag is not a bag of trash actually I usually leave it up on top it's it's a bunch of random uh, fittings and parts for sprayers because with with all these little tees and such being plastic and with all these sprayer tips being plastic, stuff gets brittle as it ages and breaks. Or you, I caught, I caught this this bracket here on a fence recently and pulled it off, and it snapped, snapped that fitting. So it's nice not to lose a day's work. It's nice to be able just to, in a quick five minutes, be able to uh, swap the broken plastic pieces back out and get back to work. You may wonder why I have what are essentially limiter straps on there when the bracket has springs that helps that stay in place. 
that's just because with my my application here where the tail lights are particular in particular if i hit something or it, it bounced down real hard and went underneath the tail light sometimes it would hang up and not come back out so i just have some limiters on there to uh keep it uh nice and, and level but it can still it can still pull back if it hits an obstacle or it can still flex up uh, for folding and that's what all the bungee cords are for to once i once i fold them up to tie them up so as you can see there's not much to that if you're parting out a, a sprayer like i was that just wasn't cutting the mustard for you um, it's real easy just to add those components and maybe an extra few feet of hose to a uh, 275 gallon liquid storage container and you're in business another plus to this is i can spray all day with 275 gallons and whereas uh, 60 gallons like i said i was spending more time you know, refilling the tank than I was uh, spraying and getting anything done. Well, folks, I just wrapped up spraying for the day. Another successful day with the homemade sprayer with minimal investment. Um, I did probably about uh, 12 to 15 acres. Uh, and the only thing I've got left for the year, because I've been chipping away at it already, is the pasture you see right behind me. I'm not sure if you can see the sheep, but uh, got the sheep in that paddock for now. And once it rains on some of the stuff I've already sprayed, I'm going to move them out and then take care of that and then that'll that'll do it for the spring um like i said it's been uh, it's been working great for me with uh, minimal investment all i had to do is uh, repurpose a few things i already had laying around and i'm sure a lot of you've got the same kind of things that you might be able to put together yourself so i uh, appreciate you watching and hope you got something out of the video and hope to see y'all again real soon thanks a lot